Hi, everyone. This is Sam Silverman, Managing Partner of EB5AN. Thank you for taking time to join us uh, for today's webinar. Today, we're going to be discussing the Twin Lakes, Georgia Rural EB5 project uh, with Deepak from India, uh, an investor who recently joined uh, the Twin Lakes project. Deepak, thank you for taking time to join us uh, for today's presentation. Um, could you introduce yourself and share a little bit about your background experience and kind of why you decided to pursue an EV5 uh, investment recently? Sure, thank you very much, Sam. Um, I think uh, I never thought about that I would ever, you know, uh, think of shifting to the US and uh, I should explore any such kind of option. So there was um it was more like i was at a platform was at an age where i was i uh, had to decide that where my kids when they grow up where should they be studying and um and i figured out that us is one of the good place where they should study when they go to university or college and um irrespective of if i shift to the us or or not they would be going there so I thought that, you know, if I have an option, is there an option available where, you know, I can, um, where going to the US for the study become easier. So I started researching on, on Google and that's where I came across EB5, that, that this is one of the option and um, it's a comparatively faster than anything else. And um, plus factor was more about that if I, I can have this and always have it as a backup with me, um, irrespective of, you know, these guys settle in U.S. or not settle in U.S., they go to the U.S. Uh, for study or not. So that's what basically made me attracted towards uh, EB-5. Um, uh, as, a, as a background, you know, I've been uh, uh, an entrepreneur uh, for 10, 15 years and have been traveled a lot in all different countries. Um, and uh, that's why I thought that maybe you know, uh, to get global exposure to my kids, uh, because that would make them give an edge when they grow up and when they enter into industry. Um, so that's how all of this came up. Got it. Got it. And so you, you were kind of researching online, you know, how to, how to have, you know, long-term education kind of mobility in the U.S. online. And then that's kind of how you stumbled across EB-5 initially. Yes. Got it. Okay, so so once you had kind of read about it and you know understood, oh, this is an option that actually may work, and you know kind of looked through the criteria, the timing, the capital required, the process. You know where wh where did you go from there? What was kind of your your next step after you decided, okay, this is something I do, you know, want to seriously look at. Um. I think first time when I came across this option, uh, it was more of a surprise for me. I thought that how could someone just invest X amount of money and get a green card? I, because all, all the thing that I had in my mind or from a previous experience, because in India, a lot of people go to US, apply for H1, and then they're waiting for 15 years for their green card. And I thought that is how everybody gets a green card. Uh, but when I came across this option that, hey, you can, Put some money, invest, and you, you know you can get a green card as an investor in a much shorter period of time. I was pretty surprised at that point of time, and I thought this is not possible. This is something which is somebody has written with less experience, less knowledge. There should be more to it. So I I did more research, and the more research I did, you know, uh, all this came to be true that this is actually possible, and. Um, then in, in my uh, network, I asked more people and I found out that, yes, uh, a lot of people have used this particular option. So that made me more comfortable that, you know, this is better uh, rather than waiting for 15 years through the other uh, visas that are available, uh, whether it is EB1, 1, 2, 3 or whatever yeah, are there. So that's, that's how, you know, it, it came up. Got it. Got it. Okay. So when, when you had a little bit more insight into the timing and how it was going to work. Um, I'm sure you started to do more research on attorneys, projects, you know, all of that. How how did that process with respect to the attorney kind of play out? Did you talk to a few different attorneys and then 
kind of zero in on one that you liked or yeah what was that what was that process like for you yeah i think how it started was i met someone in india who came to my office you know and he met me and he said that hey we represent this organization we help in eb5 and uh, i think they they were representing a particular eb5 projects uh, uh, and he told me some information about it and he says that I'm going to connect to you with some of the attorneys which we work with. And he actually connected me to, with a few attorneys. And uh, they just sent me, you know, a quote that, hey, we are going to charge you X amount of dollars. And then never got back to me with, do you have any questions? Uh, you know, do you want, you know, do you, are you facing any problem? Why you will work with us or not work with us? And I, I thought that is this how all the attorneys are like that you know just send a quote and until you don't say yes or don't pay them money in advance they are not going to be considered about uh, about you and that was pretty surprising um and then you know i kept talking to people and somehow someone then connected me to fragman and and when i had a chat with them it was less about engage us you know this is how much we charge it was more about answering all the questions that i had um and there was there was no push for eb5 it was like hey this is one option there's another option that is there let us figure out which one is best for you so it was very very you know like a helping nature so i i then that's how i decided that i should go with an attorney uh, who is trying to solve my problem rather than just fill the eb5 form for me and file it at, uh, at the government office so my major you know, uh, criteria for selecting a particular law firm was, um, are they really interested in me or just, you know, my application? Got it. Got it. Okay. So, so someone connected you with Fragomen and, and, and that's who you decided to go with. How, um, you know, before we get into the project part, you know, how was, how was your experience working with the team at Fragomen? You know, who, who were you working with and how was the, Kind of documentation process what did that look like hours you know how long did it take you know before you were ready to actually finalize a decision on a project um i think i started working you know my initial discussion was with mitch and uh, i think he's a senior attorney then uh, he told me that he's going to pass me over to one of his partner john and then after that all of the you know my discussion or my application was with john uh, after that and I would say that it was more like when I had a talk with him in the first one hour itself, he actually understood what I do, you know, from where the investment will come in and what kind of problems I'm going to face. So I, I, I could sense that he has done so many applications that kind of he knows where uh, my, uh, you know, I will face a problem in my application collecting documents. So he was very quickly able to give answers to all my questions as well as told me that what he really need and what i should not worry much about um, so the process was pretty smooth after that uh, he sent me a list of you know documentation that they required and i think at my side it, if if i combined everything it would have taken nine hours in total to to collect all the documents not more than that um, of course the period was one month uh, which took to get all the things that they needed but in terms of hours, I would have spent not more than nine hours uh, for for everything. Got it. Okay. Okay. That that makes sense. Um, okay. And in, in in having just gone through that experience of preparing the source of funds, working closely with Mitch uh, and his team at Fragomen, you know what what kind of general advice would you have for someone considering EB five? You know, with respect to the attorney relationship. Um, I think the first would be that, you know, the availability of the, uh, of the immigration attorney. So when I say availability that, as I told you, when I talked to a couple of the others, they were not replying to my email. They were not interested in me find that much that they will ask me question if I was having a problem or not, because in between then, you know, they send you a, a long list of documents that are required. You know, not everything you will have it handy yeah? and you will have a lot of questions that if this is not there, can this work and things like that. And uh, that particular attorney should be very 
it should be available for 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 answering all those questions within a day or within a two days or get on the call and here i found out that you know um, when i was working with john he was quickly give me a call and answer or he will tell me within one uh, hour itself the answers to the question that i had so that yep. I, i think that really um create a huge difference because when you're going through a process and you're investing a, a lot lot of money uh, anxiety is always there at every step and you need someone who basically takes you through that anxiety and 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 answers all the question that you have i think that plays a huge role uh, and of course because this program eb5 program is is there for for years if you have someone who has handled a lot of applications in past kind of he knows you know what will be the problem that will come up with the government authorities based on his experience so i would say that go with the one who has a lot of experience and has a personal people side of it as compared to purely professional and i will charge you for all the hours that i spend with you so i think those two things really mattered a lot to me personally got it okay that that makes sense responsiveness and getting those answers quickly to avoid a delay in getting the application ready is definitely a critical a critical piece of you know why yeah. one attorney you know would be a better fit than than another um okay all right so 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 shifting gears let's let's spend a few minutes talking about kind of eb5 projects and i know you know at the end of the day selecting an eb5 project is you know obviously an investment and an allocation of capital and mm -hmm. you know your, yourself as a successful entrepreneur you know i imagine that you make capital you know investment decisions allocation decisions you know on a on a frequent basis and you're always evaluating risk return and track record and likelihood of success so yeah as you were you know kind of starting the eb5 project research part of your experience yeah just kind of walk us through Yeah, how did how did that experience play out? You know, how many projects did you look at and what was your kind of framework, you know, in terms of evaluating, you know, what what to focus on? Yeah, sure. So I think uh my criteria was very simple from the start that uh, if I'm investing my money, I want a uh project that gives me return and does not fail in a way. So I actually looked at all the all the projects and all the you know regional centers that are there i had a talk with them and uh my first preference was of course which has a less risk and has a good success rate so i was inclined more towards urban uh, which is very obvious because you know urban has a high would have would be having a high success rate and uh, i i had a look at a lot of urban projects uh and the next criteria i looked at was that it should not be a project which is just getting started because if it's just getting started it has a high chances of failure also it it not high chances of failure but it has a high risk that it can stop at any point of time it, you know there are a lot of factors which through which it may uh, not work out in the end so uh, i started removing the projects which are going to start after one or two years of the investment you know because they are in a very initial planning stage i wanted that you know the the construction has already started or it's half baked and things like that so that reduced uh, reduced a lot to a you know a very small number of projects in the end um but while i was going through it you know i also came across some statistics that you know uh, uh i was i was tracking very closely uh, some of the stats that were posted on the blogs um uh, like lucid text etc where it was given that you know what what is the uh, current rate looks like that you know if people are applying in urban that how long it's going to take for you to get a green card and uh, in february i came across that 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 number has already reached 5 years uh, estimated you know nobody knows accurate but it was reached 5 years and i uh, from my you know research it showed that the people who applied in eb5 before you know the old way when 500k was the investment they sometimes had to wait for 7 years and 10 years i didn't want to get into that particular cycle of un you know unknowingness that what is going to happen so i quickly shifted from urban to the uh, to the rural one so yeah, i was very very close to investing in one urban project and i had to change it in in february so i came back to the start scratch at zero and then i started to look at all the rural ones um 
now when I was going through all the rural projects, there were many projects which were of um, mountains, for example, you know, uh, which were be building a resort or, or a hotel or things like that. Um, some had not construction was not started. So again, I removed all the one where construction has not started to, to minimize the risk factor. Then um, I was less interested in resort because, you know, resort was again of a type where it, it had a lot had to be done to make it successful. Uh, so then I removed all the resorts as well. And then in the end, I came across few projects which were left with um, like the housing one, which was, you know, the one which EB5 has to lakes. So this was one of the one which was prominently, you know, looking at um, a, as a one which had everything that I was looking at. So when I say everything, that means it has a very good history. Uh, they were, it was not an, a blank site where it is projected that the houses are going to be made. Um, it had uh, a people who had already invested and also got an approval on EB5. That means, you know, that was also a plus factor. Uh, so all the all the things it was very close to Atlanta downtown. That means you know there are a lot of people who would be shifting. It is not going to get. Uh, it is not that far away land in in mountains that nobody would want to buy a house over there. So there was it, it was a high success kind of project that I that I found out. So um, so in the end I was actually you know uh, shortlisted to one was Twin Lakes and there was one other project which was related to providing internet connection to the you know rural area uh, that is where you know when you ask about my business background i did the, these were the two ones which i was very close to and then i figured out that that internet project which is going to take 5 to 6 years to finish and based on my estimate you know that uh, it 5 to 6 years everywhere starlink can come up and they can provide you know internet via satellite and that project can go bust if if this happens so so then i could i actually you know left that project because everything go was good in that project in a way um so then i this that means in a project you have to also evaluate in five to seven years what is going to happen uh and that's why i moved to twin lakes in the end and and it satisfied all my parameters from that standpoint Got it. Got it. So rural, rural ended up being a lot more important in your decision with with the new data that that came out. Um, so yeah. that was that was fortuitous that you got a chance to see that current data, even though you know the Visa Bulletin is still is still showing as current. So that's that's really that's really good. Um, in, in in terms of the job creation, you know how how much did the job creation so far in the project kind of factor into into your decision. Um, I think since you know this project already had a valid approval from from the government, you know UCIS. So I thought that you know that would not be a problem for for you know the follow on extension of the project. So it was very little uh, emphasis uh, because I looked at the history to to see that will this be a problem or not. So, um, so that that is how I I looked at this particular parameter of job creation. Got it, got it. Um, and in in terms of in terms of kind of track record of success, how how important was you know evaluating the experience and and kind of reputation of the developer in this case the Coulter Group? How how important was that in in your decision? Uh, I think it was it was pretty important because some of the other projects where I I was considering uh, there were few developers which uh, were pretty big but when you search about them on internet there were few you know news that was coming on that they defaulted the loan or you know there some project failed uh, so I the, you know you you want to have uh, bank on a, on someone who has not had any such kind of history so it, it mattered and and i have i have i rejected few because of the developer having one or two such cases in past um so in this case you know it was all positive so that's why i, I went ahead with it in, in with with Calder. got it got it okay um and so shift, shifting away from from the project you know obviously 
when you when you pick a project, you're 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 picking both the project and also the the sponsoring regional center as as well, right? In this case, EB5AN is the regional mm-hmm. center, and Twin Lakes, you know, by Coulter is is the actual development. Um, you know what what was important to you with respect to you know kind of picking or you know framing out which regional centers were you know were, were attractive for you to be you know an investor in one of their projects um i think i used a very similar criteria that you know with the regional center as well that is this uh, regional center going to you know just need me at, for my application or he's really interested in in helping me kind of thing so uh, whatever i use the parameter for selecting the uh, attorney immigration attorney i use the same over here uh, whenever i was talking to any regional center some regional center actually replied me after a week or after four days that means you know if i face any problem during my investment or if i need more documents or during the phase when the application is going on if they if they take such a time to reply uh, I, I don't want to depend on them so one of the criteria was actually that you know they ha- they should care about more about me rather and and not just my money so whenever let's suppose i i interacted with eb5 an you know i got a very quick response uh, within a couple of hours itself but I, I should not even say a day so that was a you know very big factor for me and this was not just before i invested it was after the investment also uh, if i had any query it was very quick to get a response from you guys um, so that played a very big uh, parameter uh, being in business myself and consulting, you know, you, this is a huge trust factor that if you raise anxiety of the people at the other end, they don't trust you, no matter how good you are. Um, the second was, again, the history. That means um, historically, there are a lot of projects that have been successful. You know, that was another criteria. And uh, I think the, the bigger role that played was uh, a lot of regional centers were there as a as a middlemen of course they help you invest uh, but all my you know learning about eb5 uh, was done majority by the uh, by all the knowledge that was provided by eb5 an website so a huge trust actually got developed from there every question that i had in my mind whenever i used to search for it on google or or try to ask you know, all the answers were available and it was not very biased way. Uh, it was very uh, unbiased manner. Hey, if you are of this particular type, you should consider these kind of projects. It was not necessary that consider only our projects. So um, someone who is actually more interested in giving value to you and helping you creates, uh, actually that was much matters more to me, actually. Um, so in all the regional centers, nobody was interested in coaching me uh, and answering my queries. They were just interested in, you know, investing in their in their project. Uh, but I found it a little bit different in case of EV five AN, and that's why you know that was a factor for for me going with with you guys. Got it. Got it. We 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 appreciate that very much and our our primary goal is is investor education we want all the information to be known and communicated and available and yeah un- unfortunately with all these new rules that have come into place in the last few years there's no longer a, a one size fits all everyone has a mm. unique situation country of birth ability to adjust status preferences on you know timing and and return of capital so yeah, there, the, the, there's kind of a, a wide variety of factors there that um, you know that will vary investor to investor. Um, so that that, that yeah. is definitely that is definitely different now than it was a few years ago. Um, okay. Um, in in one, one other question on the on the regional center side, um, you, you you mentioned you had spoken with you know a number of the other projects, both urban and and rural. Um, you know what was what was what was different kind of other than you know response timing like you know were you able to speak with the principals of of the other firms and you know really kind of talk directly with the boss to understand how the deal was structured the timing you know or was it mostly 
you know, kind of interaction with um, with salespeople, you know, at at a lot of the other companies? Uh, actually, in most of them, I think I found out that it is uh, very much business processized. You know, either it was a very young associate whose job is to just take you through the slide deck and tell you, you know, about the project, which is like, you know, any um, uh, any real estate kind of business. They were not running a, you know, EB5 kind of regional center kind of thing. So they were, if you ask any other question apart from the project, they were not aware of it. Um, so which was like, you, you know, they are just there doing their job. Uh, they are not just interested in, in you or in future, you know. So there was one was that kind of thing. Another was that even if there were some senior people um, involved in the project, I could see that they had just joined either two, three years back. They are just and, and they after two, three years back, they may not be there. So uh, you are right. There was no such I, I didn't get a chance to talk to any principal in, in any of the regional centers. Actually, it was mostly someone who was hired either two years back or four years back or an associate or five years. I mean, it, they were all guys who were there the job and I don't know after my investment, they would still be there or not. So I have to maybe write to info at you know regionalcenter.com to know what is my status or if I have to ask a question, I, there, there would be no name, which was which was again making me very nervous uh, in, in the end. Which was not the case with here, you know, Sam, I was interacting with you. You were very fast in replying to me and, and all that stuff, which was which which boosted my confidence a lot. And that's how in my business also it was the same. You know, if I'm working with a client, I'm myself always available there and it gives them a huge confidence that the the founders of the company are involved. That means nobody can screw them very easily. And because the founders take care of reputation a lot, they will not let any mistakes slide. And uh, which I found out a lot in, in, in you, found with you as well. I got the same vibe from you. Um, and that attracted me. Uh, more towards uh, EB five AM. Got it. That 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 makes sense. And yes, we're, we're we're definitely very on top of communication. And yeah, we want we want people to feel comfortable and get the answers, you know, directly from you know the person making the decisions. That's that that we we look at that as table stakes for this type of an investment. This amount of money, this long of a relationship. That's that that that's critical. Um, mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, so, you know, having having just gone through the process, you know, in the last couple of months, um, you know, what what general advice would you have for new investors like you who are, you know, seriously considering making an EB five investment? You know, obviously, you know, the projects available three months ago versus the projects that will be available in a few months from now. You know, will be will be different, right? Though there will be a different landscape. Yeah. Um, you know, so keeping that in mind, you know, what 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 general tips would you have, you know, for investors who are considering, you know, making making an EB five investment in the near future? Um, I think I would say use something similar kind of mechanism because when we invest uh, of course we are investing in a project uh, but also investing in the people who are involved in the project so it may be that in some cases project may appear very very lucrative but i would still say that give 50 percent interest to the people who are involved in in the project if you can't talk to the people who are involved and if they don't care about you they can basically anytime screw you up no matter how good the project or documents look like. So I would say that, you know, hiring an attorney or hiring a project give a lot of, at least 50% give emphasis to the people who are involved. Um, that's the only thing. Otherwise, everybody may have their own risk appetite and, and you know, return and everything. So I would say um, only people would be more important, I guess. Got it. And in, in, in terms of the project itself, just looking at the project, what are what are kind of the three or four, you know, key items for you that you know would be applicable for any EB five project? You know, if you had to pick another project in in a year from now, let's say. 
Um, I think uh, um, how you know how soon you are getting your money back and how much is the interest rate? Those two things you know should matter to you. Uh, but you know this there is a huge range I figured out over the period of time. I also met few regional center who was giving a very high rate of return and they were also you know giving the money back in a you know a much shorter time period but i but i chose not to go with them um and it was again list with the risk appetite that was there and the experience that was associated uh, at that time so i would say when we are choosing the project choose the one which is not in a very nascent stage it has already picked up and and started you can see the construction going on or it has half baked i would say that that would be a very important factor uh, which I would say you sh should look at uh, if someone is investing at this point of time. And if you can get a chance to go and, and see the place, there's nothing, you know, th that particular project, nothing better than that because the, the kind of confidence that you can get when you have visited is, is a huge, um, I would say, you know, day and night difference as compared to when you're looking at the slides and the projects. Uh, at least for me, it mattered a lot. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so we're very glad you got a chance to visit and that I got a chance to sit down with you in person as well in in Atlanta after your visit. So that was that was great. Um, perfect. Thank you. Thank you again for for taking the time to spend with us today. You've shared a lot of uh, a lot of advice and a lot of suggestions that I think a lot of our future clients watching this will will benefit from. And yeah, we, we really appreciate your your time and your confidence uh, and your trust that you've put in EB5AN, me and, and, and the Twin Lakes project. Yeah, I uh, really appreciate that, uh, Sam. I think um, I think the small things that, that were done during the course, you know, created a very good experience. So for example, just having a, um, getting the documentation from you, for example, for the project where I had to fill in and sign, uh, when I was subscribing for other projects, they also sent me the same documentation, but I had to fill in everything in that in that documentation. My name, you know, my passport number, and the, you know, you have to fill it multiple times. Um, and I thought it's okay because when you're investing, you have to fill in all the details so that they are correct. Uh, but you know, when I received from you, similar kind of thing, it was already filled in. That means there was some guy who actually took my you know, passport and all the details and he filled all the places where my name had to be written, my passport number has to be written and things like that. Now there was no need for you to do that. There was, but it, it was like you would wanted to remove all the friction points that would come up to me and, and you, you're saving that particular time. It was such a subtle thing that most people ignore. So it was more of like having a, you know, I, in future also if i face any problem i'm assuming that you know there's the same kind of experience that i'm i may get so these subtle things i think matter a lot when you are working with someone who's really good it's like you have a you know you're working with a doctor and if a doctor is taking care of very very small things you know he's a good doctor so i would say it's very similar like that so there's a very good experience working with you guys Thank you. We we really appreciate it. And yes, we we we've refined that intake process over the years. And it is it is frustrating to try to figure out a new document and where to fill what in. And so we've kind of streamlined that process into that key key data form so that you fill it in once and then our team who's filled out hundreds of these fills everything in, populates it all, and it's very simple and you know, error free and 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 saves you time as well. Obviously our investors are you know, entrepreneurs, they're, they're, they're busy, they have other things to do. And so, yeah, we want to kind of minimize that, minimize that friction yeah. and waste of time. Yeah, Perfect. so there are many such examples, I think. So it was pretty good experience. Great, well, thank you again, Deepak. We, we really appreciate it. Yeah, same here, Sam. Good, good, good experience working with you on this project.